So I'm a chemist. Uh, what do you think of when I, when I say that? Do you think of the hit TV show, Breaking Bad? <laughs> where you have that chemistry teacher who decides he wants to do more than teach and go and make illicit drugs uh, on the side. OK, the guy was perhaps a little misinformed and misguided, but he was clever and innovative, and that's really what chemists are. Chemists are developing new ways of doing incredible things. That's uh, already, we've seen that today. We've seen two or three people mention the word chemistry in their talks. That's because chemistry is the central science. <laughs> chemists are designing new drugs, designing new materials, doing really exciting things. But we have a problem, and that problem is the feedstock that we as chemists are using. Pretty much every chemical that we use and transform into something else comes from petroleum feedstocks. They're non-renewable and we're causing major, major environmental issues by this. So one option is to say, OK, well, I've got my plastic bottle. I'll go recycle it, do my bit for the environment. And I am a chronic recycler. I recycle pretty much everything at home. And now what I do is I go to my friend's house, and if I see something lying around, I'll take it back, and I will recycle it. I think the, the town of Southington is wondering what on earth is going on with this one guy who lives at this house, who seems to be able to not only fill, but fill to overflowing his recycling bin every week. But if every one of us goes away and does all the recycling we can, that is still not going to be enough. What we need is we need a paradigm change. We need to get away from using these non-renewable feedstocks and move to something new. What we need to do is we need to start to use biomass as our starting material. So what's biomass? Biomass is things like leaves, like trees, like grass clippings, like our waste is even biomass. What we want to do is we want to use that as our starting material because that is renewable. So what we can do is we can take that biomass and we can send it into two different streams. The first of those is called the sugar platform. So that's because a lot of molecules that are in this biomass contain sugar molecules. And I, my, my, my helper is now going to provide me with a sugar molecule. Here is a simple sugar molecule. All sugar molecules are made up of the same thing. They're these rings and in them they've got the elements carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And as a chemist, I am literally slobbering everywhere when I think about carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. <laughs> because I can use those elements to make all the compounds that I might ever want. All I've got to do is learn how to selectively break bonds and form new bonds and make my molecule. But as good a chemist as I am, there's actually a better chemist than me out there. And that's nature. Nature's had a few years on Nicholas Leadbeater. And nature is very, very good at taking these sugar molecules and turning them into exciting new compounds. So I can use things like yeasts and other bugs that you might think, oh no, they are really clever. They can take compounds and they can selectively make new compounds. So we can put these sugars into the sugar platform and use these bugs, uh, uh, nature's catalysts, to do chemistry. Well, another thing that chemists like to do is heat things nice and hot. So what we can do is we can take some of this biomass and put this into this second platform, this syngas platform. So what we can do here is, again, we can do exciting chemistry. We can take some of the biomass that wasn't suitable for going up into the sugar platform, and we can do traditional chemistry on that. The other great thing is that what comes out of both of these platforms are really exciting, new, and uh, uh, great chemicals. But we also get waste. Everything creates waste, right? So the sugar platform pr produces a, a fair amount of waste, and our syngas platform also produces a fair amount of waste. But that waste that our syngas is producing is gas, and we can burn that gas for clean energy. The, the, the stuff that comes out of the sugar platform, we can take that, and we can burn that for clean energy. So we have now a new energy source coming out of this same renewable feedstock. And at the end of it, we get all sorts of exciting fuels, chemicals, and materials. So I'd be a liar if I was to say that we're there already. So how do we get along 
to that point? Well, the first thing I want to do is focus on what chemists do. So as chemists, we're becoming interested in what we call green chemistry. That's doing chemistry in a cleaner, greener, and easier way. So my mum always told me that I should eat my vegetables, because if I ate my vegetables, I'd grow up to be a big, strong, healthy boy. Well, I'm still here. <laughs> Although I did argue with her over Brussels sprouts. I said, Brussels sprouts are an abomination. But if we can prevent causing waste in the laboratory, then we don't have to clean it up at the end. That makes it easier. Another thing that chemists are becoming interested in is so-called atom economy. We all know what economy is. We know that money comes out of the pocket faster than it goes in quite often. What about atom economy? Well, what we want to be able to do is take all the atoms that are in our starting material and turn them into the product. We don't want any waste. We don't want any byproducts. If we can do this selectively, then chemists are on to a good thing. So when you go to a chemistry demonstration, of course, you know, you want someone to blow up something, right? That's what chemistry is all about, right? We don't want that, really, when we're talking about doing things on a large scale. So we want to try and find less hazardous ways of doing our chemistry. And we can do that. As well as designing new, safer chemicals, why do we want that chemical to live around for 300 years when we only need it for a little period of time? Can we make our chemicals biodegradable? Also, can we do our chemistry in a very efficient way? Well, that's what I, as a chemist, can do for you. But what can we, as a world, do to try and get towards this new paradigm? Well, what we've got to realise is that when we go to this biomass-derived feedstocks, it's really good for us all. It's good for science. There's going to be some really exciting science coming out of this. It's going to put chemists to the test. They're really going to have to think. Not only chemists, but engineers and other scientists. So it's really going to come up with some really exciting chemistry that's going to come out of this. It's going to be good for the planet. No longer are we digging wells, fracking. What we're doing is we're taking nature's waste and we're turning it into chemicals for the future. So it's going to be good for the planet. And it's also going to be good for economics. If we're not creating all this waste, we don't have to dispose of it. It's going to be cheaper. So if we as a community can all come together and realize that chemistry is great, but what we can do is so much better. So maybe chemists can break bad. They can break the bad of the old petroleum feedstocks and move now to the good, these new, exciting ways to do chemistry. Thank you so much.